Yellowstone supervolcano is fueled by heat from below the Pacific Ocean, according to a new study by the University of Illinois. Recent stories in the national media are magnifying the fears of a catastrophic eruption from the Yellowstone supervolcano, but scientists remain uncertain about the likelihood of such an event, and to better understand the region's subsurface geology, University of Illinois geologists rewound and replayed back a portion of its geologic history, and they find that Yellowstone volcanism is more, far more complex and dynamic than they previously believed. The heat needed to drive volcanism usually occurs in areas where tectonic plates meet and one slab of crust slides or subducts under another one. Now we know that Yellowstone is one of the 20 some odd supervolcanoes around the Earth and it has the biggest magma reservoir which sits under its magma chamber and they believe it's the biggest because they've studied it more than any other supervolcano. Perhaps there are other supervolcanoes that are bigger would be their bigger magma chambers. We have found a bigger uh, supervolcano than Yellowstone in the Pacific around the Philippines, which is two and a half sizes bigger, two and a half times bigger than Yellowstone. It's a submarine volcano. Now, uh, the Yellowstone and other volcanic areas of the inland United States, western United States, are far away from the active plate boundaries along the west coast. This is according to what geology professor Li Jun Liu, who led this new research, says. He explains in these inland cases, a deep-seated heat source known as a mantle plume is suspected of driving crustal melting and surface volcanism. In the new study reported in the journal Nature Geoscience, Liu and graduate students from uh, named Quan Zhu and Jiu Zhu Hu used a technique called seismic tomography and that's how they were able to look into the subsurface of the western United States to piece together the geologic history behind, behind the volcanism. And using supercomputers, the team ran different tectonic scenarios to observe a range of possible geologic histories for the western United States over the past 20 million years. The effort yielded little support for the traditional mantle plume hypothesis. Zhu said, our goal is to develop a model that matches up with what we see both below ground and on the surface today. We call it a hybrid geodynamic model because most of the earlier models either start with an initial condition and move forward or start with the current conditions and move backwards. But our model does both which gives us more control over the relevant mental processes. So one of the many variables a team entered into their model was heat. Hot subsurface material, like that in a mantle plume. And they say this should rise vertically towards the surface, but that was not what happened and what researchers saw in their models. They said it appears that the mantle plume under the Western United States is sinking deeper into the earth through time, which seems counterintuitive, according to Liu. He says, this suggests that something closer to the surface, an oceanic slab originating from the western tectonic boundary, is interfering with the rise of this plume. So something is stopping it. Something is blocking the plume. So what is it? What's blocking this plume? The mantle plume hypothesis has been controversial for many years and the new findings add to the evidence for the revised tectonic scenario, according to the researchers. Liu said, the robust result from these models is that the heat source behind the extensive inland volcanism, inland being where Yellowstone is more inland than the west coast, usually originated from the shallow oceanic mantle to the west of the Pacific Northwest coast. This directly challenges the traditional view that most of the heat came from the plume below Yellowstone. Eventually, we hope to consider the chemical data from the, uh, the volcanic rocks in our model. Zhu said that that will help us further constrain the source of the magma because rocks from deep mantle plumes 
and near surface tectonic plates could have different chemistries. As for likelihood of violent demise, the eruption, a violent eruption of uh, Yellowstone, that is a supervolcanic eruption occurring anytime soon, the researchers say it's still too early to know that. They said, of course, our model can't predict specific future super eruptions, but looking back through 20 million years of history, we do not see anything that makes the present day Yellowstone region particularly special, at least not enough to make us suspect that it may do something different from the past when many catastrophic eruptions occurred. And Liu said, more importantly, this work will give us a better understanding of some of the mystery, mysterious processes deep within the Earth, of course under Yellowstone, which will help us better understand the consequences of plate tectonics, including the mechanisms of earthquakes and volcanoes. Now there is evidence in the Cassia Hills of Idaho, west of Yellowstone, that, re that reveals 12 past catastrophic eruptions. According to the Geological Society of America, ancient super eruptions west of Yellowstone, USA, were investigated by an international initiative to examine how frequently these massive volcanic events took place. Yellowstone, as we know, famously erupted cataclysmically in recent times, but these were just the latest of a long succession of past huge explosive eruptions that turned, that burned a track from Oregon eastward, northeast that is, um, towards Yellowstone, well not, not northeast, eastward, yes, from Oregon, uh, towards Yellowstone during the past 16 years, uh, 16 million years. The Cassia Hills of southern Idaho preserve evidence of 12, 12 catastrophic large-scale explosive eruptions which left widespread glassy deposits fused to the landscape and each deposit preserves subtly distinctive magnetic, mineralogical and chemical characteristics that allow them to be traced from great distances, throughout great distances. So this, this was painstaking work by Thomas Knott and his colleagues and he reveals records of previously undiscovered large-scale eruptions which cause Earth's crust in the area to subside by more than three kilometers, leaving a deep volcanic basin along the Snake River Plain. And these older volcanic eruptions were hotter and probably more frequent than the Yellowstone eruptions. This is from Geological Society of America, and it's on Science Daily. Now, in the meantime, we know that the mantle plume feeding Yellowstone is coming from Baja, California. That's also the mantle plume that's feeding the west coast of the high threat California volcanoes. Basically, this mantle plume is split into two. It's west coast and also the, that's the left arm and the right arm is going uh, north, northeast, coming through uh, Nevada, Utah, Colorado, up to Yellowstone. And these are the images that show it here on the top one there, 11 o'clock. You can see the red spots are how it forms and travels towards that area up to Yellowstone. Coming from, of course, Baja, California. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help 
economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.